All right, welcome everybody. Today we're talking about million dollar money making opportunities. There's money to be made everywhere. The problem is we didn't have a millionaire mentor. Most people didn't have a millionaire mentor, don't know how to make any money. So let's talk about it. I can't, I literally, you could drop me anywhere in the United States in any room and I, I can show you 10 things, 10 things that'll make somebody a millionaire, have made them a millionaire or about to make them a millionaire. So we live in a world where everybody's broke. Literally, almost everybody's broke. It's insane. Even though, what do we know? The rich are getting richer. So you're on the wrong side of the transaction. I can't tell you how many people, look, let's just grab anything. These glasses wipes, um, this spring water. Spring water, do you know how much it costs to generate this bottle of spring water, not counting the glass? Let's just count the water maybe a penny if you got a spring i'm looking at buying a piece of farmland in virginia that produces 500,000 gallons of water per day and if you don't bottle it it just flows into the river if i bottle this you put a glass this glass is recyclable so they make some money they get some government incentive back that probably cost them 10 20 cents for this glass this is one cent they sell this to you for two bucks coca-cola is laughing all the way to the bank people drinking dasani or all is it pepsi that owns dasani or whatever aquafina and all this stuff they're laughing all the way to the bank when you don't know how to be on the right side of the transaction you're a sucker so look at kate's spray tan you see this spray tan which is way too i told her she looks like tropical thunder um robert downey jr uh how much did that cost um like 40 bucks 40 bucks how much do you think spray tan costs spray tan i think it looks good Okay, whatever. It's it's it's. Somebody says she looks bad with the spray tan. Kate, I told you people. I did a vote on my Snapchat. More people liked you without well, it. Well, it's what I like, so I don't care. Okay, it's what she likes. That's fine. And what I'm talking about. Look at the person who owns the spray tan place, charging forty bucks. It costs them fifty cents for this spray tan. Maybe three bucks. It's insane. So my question is. My mentor told me, Ty, when you're sitting at a table playing poker and you don't know who the sucker is after 30 minutes, you're the sucker. So let me ask you this. If you're over 15 years old in the world and you don't know who the sucker is, you're the sucker and you're the sucker and you're the sucker and you're the sucker. See, don't someone agrees. She looks good with that. <laughs> Kate's still on the spray tan conversation. Seriously, are you the sucker? Are you the sucker? Are you the sucker? Are you the sucker? Well, if you're not a sucker, prove it. I'll give you an example. I remember what my millionaire mentor, Alan Nation, told me. I went, in a, uh, I went to a nightclub when I was old enough to go, like 21, right? I went to a nightclub. I lived at the Amish for two and a half years. I could, you know, never been to a nightclub really before. And I got there, and they charged me like 20 bucks for a drink. It was a nightclub in Raleigh, North Carolina. It was called The Office. And I remember the 100, it was 20 bucks for whatever drink I got. And I did the math in my head. And I said, wait a second. This probably in alcohol cost is under a dollar. They put it in the glass, mark it up, 19 bucks, and plus you give a tip. So I was going, Alan Nation told me, if you don't know who the sucker in the room is, you're the sucker. I said, wait a second, I'm the sucker. So you know what I did? I flipped the table. I got in the nightclub business. Now people were paying there. And I was still in the club, getting more girls than before. All you guys going to clubs all the time, my question to you is, why aren't you owning a club? Why aren't you promoting one night? You can rent out, I would just rent out places sometimes. So who's the sucker? Another example, I go to Las Vegas. All these people there, they don't realize Steve Wynn is not a sucker. He owns the, Bella he built the Bellagio, he owns the Wynn, he owns Encore. People are paying, they are literally, they might as well just take $10,000, walk into Vegas and throw it at the casino floor because that's what you're doing so my whole goal here we got to take some of you from being suckers to not being suckers okay can you go grab some more items she's gonna be back she's gonna well, let's do a quick giveaway give a hundred bucks to somebody I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna ask a question Oh, I got to try these on? Yeah. All right, I got to try some jackets on. My stylist is here. Okay, we'll give $100 to one person who gives their opinion. 
Gotcha. On this jacket, because if I don't want them, I gotta send them back, and these are Double expensive. K. This is a Dolce blazer. Okay. Thumbs up or thumbs down. It's a little bit crazy, but you know, I can wear this to stuff like the Grammys and stuff or like anything that. Anything with NBA players. Now, not this blue shirt. What are we going with? Yay or nay? Dolce. It's a little bit tight in the back. I don't love that. So. Who? Somebody said looks bad, looks nice, bad, bad. Well, why don't they? Somebody care? said forget that. I want to look at Kate. Somebody said you look freaking amazing. Thumbs hey, down. Dude, that's such a lame. Alright, this is Dolce. <laughs> Dolce, in my experience, makes the best clothing in the world. All you guys, and I don't know how good their female line is, but all you guys, save up for a nice suit. Save up for You can get a good Dolce suit for two grand. That stuff's handmade. I know that's a lot of money, but it takes money to make money. Save up your damn money. Z Zigna? It's Egyptian? Z Zigna. That's this is nice. a nice one. Yeah. So that one comes with pants, which you can. Who get likes the Z Zigna? Egyptian. It's Egyptian brand. It's Egyptian. It says made in. Egyptian Asia. brand. Stephanie, flashy, but you pull it off. Oh, they're talking about the red. Hopefully not. Someone that. said, "No, man, you'll look better in all black." Okay, Kate, what do you think? I like the blue. All right, we like the blue. So the blue's a thumbs up. It's a little bit tight. As long as I don't move, it fits well. Okay, let's go to let's go to number three. And this is Dolce said, too. Oh, look at this. Dolce's. How are you? Really? Dolce's coming out. Damn, I look like a Persian freaking. No offense to you Persians. This is the kind of shit Persians in LA wear right here. You guys know I'm not politically correct, but. Or Armenian. Persian. Dolce. You like my per? I'm not Persian, but I can dress like them. This is Dolce? Yeah, we got two per. I have a. One. Oh, you're Armenian. Oh, you're Persian? I have one of my lawyers is Persian and Mortez is here who does my glasses. Are you 100% Persian? Yes. One of my business partners. For, I love Persian people, but sometimes their clothes choices is suspect. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that right now. Okay, Dolce. I don't know. This one looks like a Hugh Hefner pajama like jacket. You can wear it to the midsummer Kate, night yes or no? Party. Yeah, this would be dope. I'm, I'm, I got invited to the Playboy. Uh, Hugh Hefner's son invited me to the the Playboy invite only party. You know they do different parties, Playboy Mansion. But this is the Midsummer Night Dream. I might wear this to the Midsummer Night Dream because you're supposed to wear a pajama top. Okay, thumbs down on all of them, unless you plan on joining the Killers. <laughs> Anything else? And then glasses. Okay, I got glasses. Let's give a hundred bucks right here. Tell me when. Kate, come come pick. Close your eyes. Somebody on Instagram gonna get a hundred bucks PayPal to them right now. One, two, three, stop. There we go. I'm pinning the comment. I don't know who it is. It's Christiana Reese. Congratulations. Hundred. I pinned it. I pinned it. We got these glasses. Okay. My glasses. Which ones? Yay or nay? Ooh, these are dope. I'm gonna wear these for the rest of the call. What brand is this? Huh? Mawajim, Japanese. Mawajim? It Mawajim. sounds like the movie. Mawajim. It sounds like um Princess Bride. Mawaj. <laughs> That's really how it's pronounced? Maui, like Mawajim. Guys, when you make your business, your million dollar business, make your brand pronounceable. Make your brand pronounceable. Are people going to be walking around saying Kotor, Katawari? Like some of these brands, unless you get big, no one knows how to say them. You like this? Yeah. Facebook, someone's getting a hundred, and I'm about to talk about bit money making opportunities. How about in fashion? Glasses. You know how much money? What do? You, what's the biggest glasses company in the world? Ray Ban. Ray Ban. Who was purchased by Lens Crafter? Lens Crafter owns them. How much do you think? A luxury Italian. What's global? What's global? Um, glasses, sunglasses sale. Just sunglasses. Ray Ban has the biggest campaign, and I believe they have the biggest sale. Yeah, Ray Ban. It's, it's owned by a company, Italian company called Luxottica. Who now makes all the lenses. Yeah, I like those. No, I mean, really, free, not, free. Not, not, all right, say, we're going back to business. Hundred bucks. Tell me you when to stop on Facebook. Okay, okay, I'll be over on. Ready? One, two, three, stop. Okay. All right, we got Paul Sedustu Urfi. That's an interesting name. All right, I'm gonna wear. Okay, I like the first oh. ones the most. Oh, oh are you, do you have more. only one option? Okay, so money making opportunities. Here's the deal what a millionaire mentor told me. First of all, be, oh, these are like aviators. Be on the right side of the transaction, guys. You can't always be a sucker consumer. It's just, if you want to have money, you can't always be a consumer. Some people are only consumers. I buy, I buy, these are kind of cool. No? 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't have. There's nothing that. wrong with being a consumer, but you can't be a hundred percent consumer. I like the first. So right now, think of this: if I logged into your bank account with you, you like these? So cool. Maya said no. <laughs> these? Okay. So the ones I I like these turtle. I like the turtle. Which was the first? The first ones were these. I say these. Yeah, those are good. Those are cool. I'm gonna wear these right now. Okay. And these are good. Yeah, those, yeah, those two are good. Yes. Okay, we're gonna kick these two. Okay, so which side of transaction? If I go in your bank account right now, do you have more C's or more I's? C's is consumption, I's is investment. The difference is consumption never comes back to you. I would get more items. Now, what I was saying about clothing, sometimes clothing is a good investment, especially if you're dressing to impress in a business setting, whether it be a suit, whether it be a nice pair of glasses, people notice, unfortunately, it's an unfortunate byproduct of the human brain that humans are attracted to success, uh, success even if it's an exterior looking success. You know, there's this one, uh, I forget what philosopher said or, or comedian said, God judges on the inside, but man doesn't. So yes, people are like, oh, God will judge my heart. Yeah, well, God will judge your heart, but you ain't in business with God, are you? Are you selling products to God? No, you're selling products to other humans and humans are shallow. And so you don't wanna to go too far down the route of being too shallow and be completely consumed by money uh, and material things. But on the flip side, like I said, a nice suit, more likely to get you a job. A nice suit is more likely to convey a message that you're serious about what you're doing. So a little side note. All right, let's get back to money making opportunities. Let me take a question for a second here. Any questions on what I've uh, said so far? Kate, are you bringing some more stuff? Yes. Okay. So those are Jack Bauer glasses. Uh, a lot of glasses stuff. Don't judge a book by its cover. Once again, that's naive. People do judge books by their cover all the time. So let's. I'm gonna draw some stuff here. So, millionaire mentor, here's the divide right here. Here's you, there's a, there's a cap, they call this a chasm. Here's the chasm right here. Here's the average person, financial life, they fall into the chasm, they can never get over the other side. This chasm exists at about 50 grand, 50 to 70 grand. Most people cannot cross that chasm. In the United States, the average person makes 50 to 70 grand. Uh, I think the a actual number last time I looked was like $51,000. That's what the average person makes per year. But there's a few people that make the leap. Now yesterday, if you were on my live free seminar, I identified 12 things. Does anybody remember what the 12 things are that take you across the chasm? Okay, there's a great book on this. It's literally called Crossing the Chasm. It's a very famous business book. For those of you people who are really serious about business, read the book, Crossing the Chasm. It's a game-changing book. He talks about the four different types of people, visionaries, pragmatists, conservative people, and, um, and early adopters. So whenever you're launching, that's why sometimes you can launch a business and you think it's a good idea because people buy it right away, but that's just because they're visionary and early adopters. They're the weird amount of people. There's not a lot of them. So a lot of times that's why you get stuck here. To get across, there's 12 steps, kind of like the 12 step program, but not, not uh, completely similar. But there's 12 mindset, there's million, you gotta understand millionaire mentor opportunities, millionaire mentor entrepreneurship, millionaire mentor routine, daily routine, millionaire mentor uh, mindset, right? Cause that's where the motivation comes by being able to stay ambitious to overcome procrastination. Yeah, you can put it. Sorry, can you flip the microphone, the, the antenna's pointed down in your pocket. Oh. Just flip it upside down. Okay, can I have some tea? So I want you to draw this, Kate. I'm gonna give this to you. Now, some of what we draw, depending on if you're watching live, will be backwards. Um, just keep picking all that up. Don't worry about any of the food right now. Thanks, sir. Just, Armin, we'll give you the food. You can put it on the table over there. Kate, here, I'll give you the pen. Kate's gonna draw some stuff because I suck at drawing. Uh, I got some more items. Right there. There you go. 
Okay. So I want you to draw ten, nine people here and one pe person there. Why, where do I get that ratio? It's rough. That's roughly the ratio of success. If you have 10 friends, one of them probably got a chance to be financially independent. The other nine are going to struggle their whole life. Are you good at drawing? No. That's good. You're better than me. <laughs> I'm just going to continue stick figures. Just continue stick figures. And then I want you to put nine cross chasm. Okay? Now, the tricky part about crossing the chasm for a lot of you and for me, everybody, is that it's not just one thing that gets you across. So a lot of people are gonna teach you things. The non-millionaire mindset, for example, the mindset of people on this side is work hard and save and you always cross the chasm. No, you don't. You think that your income is always proportionate to the level of energy and work? You think just waking up at six in the morning tomorrow and saying you're gonna put in 14 hours a day, you're gonna make more money? Well, you might make a little more money. You might get overtime pay at your job, but you're still stuck in the same system. So one thing Gary Halbert says is a day, one day, one hour walking on the beach with a great idea coming into your brain can make you more money than a lifetime of hard work. Okay? So crossing the chasm. <laughs> Kate, are you making some of them men? Some of them win. <laughs> so I want to just list off some things for those of you taking notes. And I'm going to go through them. I did this yesterday. I'm going to go and talk about them in different ways. There's a lot of stuff. By the way, I just want to throw this out there and this is very important. You have under two days left if you want me to personally mentor you. Give me 12 weeks and I'll change your life. That's my goal. 12 weeks. I've opened up a small test group. If you want to apply for this test group, applications end tomorrow Friday at midnight you got until tomorrow midnight so if you want to go we put the link right here if you don't want to watch this whole thing and instead you want me to personally mentor you you can go right here tylopez.com slash apply close this live or close this podcast if you're listening go to tylopez.com slash apply because the only reason I'm in interjecting with this now is because I'm closing the test group. I open the test group for exactly one week. I open it on Friday, and I'm closing it on Friday at midnight. So you lose, you snooze, you lose. I'm trying to get the cream of the crop, the people who don't procrastinate, okay? So if you go to tylopes.com slash apply, it'll explain what you're gonna learn over 12 weeks. We'll be talking every Tuesday on the phone. It'll be a live call. I'll be on um, almost all of them. Once in a while, I won't be there, but almost all of them. This is the only way I think I've ever done in the last three years where I personally mentor a test group of people okay and we'll be talking about all 12 of those one a week and I'll be giving you assignments assignments Wednesday Thursday Friday and Monday so Tuesday we talk on the phone for one and a half hours mentor call and then Wednesday Thursday Friday Monday you have a 15 minute assignment you guys already missed the first one you already missed the first week so tylopez.com slash apply all right let's go back to this uh, I'll be talking about that. Any, if there's any questions, if you go to tylopez.com uh, slash apply and you got any questions, uh, we'll be talking. I, I can answer them right now. Okay. Somebody said it's all reversed on YouTube. Well, just go to tylopez.com slash apply. I hope that's not too complex of a word for people to remember. Apply. Do you know how to spell apply? A-P-P-L-Y. You know what, I never like to make my links too easy because if someone can't figure out how to find tylopez.com slash apply, why would I want them in my test group? You know, you don't have to be Stephen Hawking genius, but you can't be a fool. <laughs> I'd just be honest with you. Some people say anybody can get rich. No, they can't. Most people too ignorant, too stubborn, too sensitive, too narcissistic to do it. All right, so let's go back to the page before. Let's talk a little bit about daily routine because one of the things that allows you to cross the chasm yeah, uh, from, remember the chasm is, put a dollar sign, 50 to 70 grand. In the United States, if you look on the IRS website, the median income or the average income, I can't remember if it was medium or average, was 50, I think $1,000. And that was a family. That, so that's joint income. Most, fam, you know, most taxpayers in the United States are married. So it's 51 grand last time I checked. It might be up a little bit or down a little bit. Now, what allows people to cross this, one of the 12 components 
is a highly efficient routine to your day. So I, I give you an example. One of the things you gotta do is delegate stuff. Like, I got friends that are broke and they still do their own wash. They wash their own clothes and it takes them you know, an hour a week. I go, look man, if you understand money making opportunities, pay somebody 20 bucks to do your wash for you. Now you're employing more people so you're helping more people in the world. Take that one hour and figure out how to make 100 bucks. Now you five extra money. Efficiency is key. Joel Salatin, my first millionaire mentor uh, when I was 19 years old, he had a precision way to do everything on the farm. This was on a farm. The way he held a shovel, if you're shoveling this way, always across the body. And when you gotta go that way, a lot of people would go against their body and lose momentum. He said, no Ty, flip the shovel around. Now you gotta do it left-handed. A great basketball player, when they're on the left side of the basket, most of the time they lay the ball up left-handed, right-handed on the other one. We live in a world where people are laying up the ball, so to speak, backwards. And so they go, oh Ty, I don't have enough time. I know why you don't have enough time, because you don't know how to manage your time. Great book on this, Managing Oneself by Peter Drucker, one of the most influential uh, business teachers of all time, probably of all time, Peter Drucker. Harvard Press puts out his books. He has a great book, Managing Oneself. He says, let me read you this, Managing Oneself. Write this down. By the way, effective daily routine, knowing how to take notes. Some of you hear great ideas. You never write them down so you get home and you forgot them. Well, then you're a sucker. You ain't never heard of a pen and pencil? We live in a world people download Evernote. My Evernote right here is worth a million bucks worth of information to me, easily. I don't forget stuff because I put it in a secure note system. So that's a free app, I believe it's free. Let me go here and I'm gonna go to iBooks. Here's another one, know how to efficiently learn. That's called Millionaire, that's called a millionaire Mentor Education. How do you educate yourself? So if you go there, there's a book you can buy. It's called Managing Oneself by Peter Drucker. I'll pull mine up. Let me read to you the first chapter or the beginning. Managing Oneself, purple book, right there. So by the way, he was a professor, but he's also, he was the head consultant to Jack Welch who built the largest company in the world at the time, which was General Electric, GE. So here we go. Here's what Peter F. Drucker says. Anybody could have this. I almost think this book is free. I'm not even sure. History's greatest achievers, a Napoleon, a Leonardo da Vinci, a Mozart, have always managed themselves. That, in large measure, is what makes them great achievers. They have always managed themselves. But there are rare exceptions so unusual, both in their talents and their accomplishments, as to be considered outside the boundaries of ordinary human existence. Now, most of us, even though those of us with modest endowments will have to learn to manage oneself. I got a question for you. Did your mommy and your daddy and your school teacher teach you how to manage one yourself? Did, was that a class in school? All you people that got your college degrees, that's great. I somewhat, I don't really respect the college degree and I don't disrespect it. To me, it's a neutral thing. It's like if you have blonde hair for, for brunette hair. It doesn't give a shit. <laughs> it doesn't mean you can do anything, better or worse. It's a neutral item. So. Did, what college class did you take? What high school elective? Who here had a mom or dad that taught a millionaire mentor efficient delegation and allocation of time? Anybody? And the answer is inevitably, when I was growing up, nothing, not one damn thing. And then people can't figure out why they can't pay the bills. People can't figure out why they were freaked out. Well, what did Peter Drucker said? What separates great achievers from others? Some people know how to manage themselves and some people are always reactive. So let's do this. Draw, can you draw a chicken with its head cut off? Kate, as best you can. Um, a chicken with its head cut off as best you, I got my dogs down here trying to catch, they're always chasing a ball. Thank you. See you Monday night. Okay, awesome. So she's gonna be doing a chicken with its head cut off. Are you, if I came today into your daily routine, if you were webcamming your whole day, if you were live on your Facebook, your Instagram, and I was watching the whole thing, and I rated it on a one to 10, what would you rate today? Let's do yesterday, because today's not over. 
on a one to 10 scale yesterday, did you manage your time? Did you manage your time? Millionaire mentor is a 10. Poverty mentality is a one. Who's a 10? Who's a five? Okay, so we got somebody said a two, a three, a one. Notorious hybrid said a 10. Jumani said eight. Adama Nick said 5.5. Five. five, somebody said 10. Somebody said a five. Alejandro Ortiz said a seven. A moron said six. Okay, Thomas Colgrave said a seven. Thank you for those of you being honest. Let's talk here for a second. A lot of you asking me about Bitcoin. A lot of you asking me about uh, real estate. A lot of you are asking me how to make money on social media. A lot of you are asking me how to get a Ferrari, a Lamborghini. Nothing can help you, nothing, when you are this. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> Kate just drew. Let, draw, let's come a little closer. Let me, let me go. I got to Snapchat this. Here, look this way. All right, I'm live right now on Facebook and Instagram. We're talking about millionaire mentor crossing the chasm from 50, 70 grand above. I had her draw a chicken with a head cut off. It's not bad, actually. <laughs> We've got probably about 100,000 people going to watch this. Be on my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube live right now. Um, okay, so there is nothing. Look, I'm going to mention this too. All of you asking me, Bitcoin a good investment, real estate, how to get a Ferrari, how to make a million bucks. Nobody can help you when your daily routine sucks. If you don't understand time allocation, how to delegate, why are you doing your own wash? Pay somebody 50 bucks and then take the same hour that you would have been doing the wash, you're paying someone else 50 bucks, make $300. You can make 300 bucks an hour, come on. Do you have any imagination? No imagination, you won't be able to figure it out, but there's money in every household item, ashtrays, people making million dollars in spray tans, partially off Kate. Okay, huh? Mustard. Really? A new new mustard? Can you do you have that mustard? No. Can we bring any mustard out here? Okay. So this, I promise you, is what you learn from parents. That's my. You know, I had a single mom. She didn't know this stuff. She tried her best, but no one trained her. Who the hell's training you? Who are you emulating? You know. And the answer, sadly, is. People pick and choose. Oh, well, you know, I saw a freaking episode of CSI and the detective seemed to be pretty smart. Well, it's fucking TV. So let's talk about some practical daily routine. I'm going to give you uh, some items right now. Okay, let's draw on new page, please, Kate. Kate's like Vanna White on uh, Wheel of Fortune or what's that one? What's the other one that? No, not Wheel of Fortune. There was another one. I'll remember it in a second. Deal or no deal. She's one of, this is the deal or no deal. Okay, let's talk about mustard for a second. It's actually, they started with ketchup. This mustard company? No. There was a mustard company, two guys started, they just sold it for $130 million to Unilever. 140. Mustard. When did they start? In the last five years. In under five years, made $140 million. Start, they did start with ketchup. Not this brand, but somebody. Maya said, two guys started a mustard company, just sold it to Unilever for how much? Maya? Wait, Maya, come over here. I don't want to Snapchat with you two miles away. <laughs> Sorry, got to do that. Is Kate my assistant? No, but she is assisting me now. Okay. My cousin Maya's here. Maya, you said two guys started a mustard company. How much did they sell it for? $140 million. $140 million. Why are you just eating mustard at In-N-Out and McDonald's? Why aren't you profiting from it? I don't understand it. $140 million in under five years to Unilever. How'd you like to look in your bank account and there's $140 million in it? Mustard. It's amazing. Let me tell you about inefficient inefficiency of time allocation from most people. Some people spend time on YouTube commenting all day. Do not comment on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram more than three a day. That's it. Three damn comments a day. If you comment more than three times on anybody's Instagram, anybody's Facebook, if you interact with social media, somebody else's social media, more than three times a day, you are a freaking idiot. 
who doesn't understand one thing about time allocation. If you are a fan, a hyper fan of somebody you've never met, you know, I have fans, people, celebrities have fans. Okay, I get it. But if you're super into a fandom world, I see people arguing about different fans. You are an idiot. No mental, you know that your brain has glucose in it. Glucose is a finite resource of the human brain. So if you use all your glucose, commenting and deciding whether you like blank social media influencer versus another blank, you just making them rich, you're on the wrong side of the transaction. Okay, so let's draw daily routine tip that I will teach you that I had to learn the hard way. It's a Is principle right called chunking. Yes, so just draw, I want you to draw two big, almost like UFO cookies. They should just be like basically a circle, okay? Big circles. So like Cookies? Yeah, like make them like look like a, a cell or something like that. Most people, when they start getting into their daily routine, what they say is, you know what, Ty? Uh, somebody said, who is this guy? One, two, three, enjoy, four, five, six. This guy, so dumb, he don't even know who he follows. Case in point, if you are clicking on stuff and you don't even know the people, you know, then I can guess your bank balance with, within 100 bucks. Okay, a lot of people you can guess their bank account within 100 bucks the second you hear the words that come out of their mouth. Their IQ is at a fucking peasant level, you know, pheasant, not even a human. <laughs> and they're trying to figure shit out. I'm like, man, I know who you are. You're the sucker that's making other people rich. You know, Rihanna took a pair of shoes. She got a contract with Puma. She said, limited edition, you can only get them. She sold out in what, 18 minutes? 220,000 pairs of shoes. A lot of people making Rihanna rich. Every time you listen to this, now I like Rihanna. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with listening to Rihanna. But I'm not so far on the other side of the transaction that I, my life consists about making Rihanna money or this person or this person. Forget, make some for yourself too. Okay, chunky. This is the, oh, that's good. This is the best principle to divide your day up. You see how there's some big chunks, but here's the wrong way. Flip it and draw a whole bunch of little circles. We're gonna probably need another four. Are we about out of here? So that was correct. I'm gonna show you the incorrect way to structure your daily routine, okay? All right, so just like little cookie, like little chunks, like, like 20 little ones. What I like to do in my daily routine is not get too fancy with it, not get too specific with it. Some people are like, Ty, from 8 to 8.45, I will, you know, do 20 burpees and eat oatmeal. And then from 9 to 9.15, I will read a book and memorize a quote. Uh, then from 9.15 to 9.30, I will check the stock market and news. I've tried that before where you create 100 tasks for yourself. She's drawing, you know. 20, 30, you cannot do 30 things in one day. There, a small percentage of people can. But in general, it becomes almost a distraction. So there's two extremes. Some of you, your daily routine is so precise that you're basically overtaxing your brain. You're spending half the time keeping the routine, not thinking, okay? Now, let's flip to the other page. What I like to do is, like today, I knew I had basically three main things that I needed to do in one day. So this morning, I had a call with uh, some finance guys on some big deals I'm working on out of New York City. That was at one o'clock. So that was one chunk, put a check mark. So I had one main chunk. Number two, I had um, uh, a big charity came and wanted me to help them go viral with their charity. I won't say the name, but it's, it's a big celebrity wanted me to help them grow there. So that was number two. That was at around three o'clock. And then this third one is I wanted to do what I'm doing right now. So by having a simple one, and then everything else just let it fall in place. You know, it doesn't matter if I eat breakfast at 10 or 10.30. Get the major things accomplished each day. You got to major in majors. Most people major in minors. It's a minor issue whether you eat at 9 or 
It's a minor issue whether you read in the morning or read at night. First things first, most important things. So here's another principle, and I just said it. First things first. I try to do the most important thing that I had to do today, I did at one o'clock. Are you writing backwards? Kate's getting skilled at writing backwards. <laughs> Video call, charity. Good. And then that was... Uh, now this is podcast. Yeah, seminar, workshop. So, again, most important thing first, charity was second, and what I'm doing right now is the... And once I'm done with this, I'll probably work out. I might go see a movie with my friends. That's it. Now, people say, oh, Ty, I can't do that because I'm working you know, two jobs to support my family. I feel for you. I've had that before. I spent years doing three jobs. So I, I know I'm not I can empathize with that. But what I'm saying is you gotta have you gotta take the first step and sometimes you'll get met the other way. So sometimes when you step out in faith a little bit and you do stuff that you wouldn't expect to work, but it's the right thing to do, all of a sudden it starts working. Sometimes you can quit one of those three jobs that you might have or quit one of those two jobs and figure out a way to make more money with just one job. If you have no faith, and faith to me is being able to get excited for something before it happens. See, a lot of people, they can't get excited for something until it happens. Well, that's not how the world works. If you're fat and overweight, you have to get excited about what it'll be like to be skinny because that's how you get the motivation to work out. You know, that's what faith is to me. I'm not talking about religious faith. Ty, do I think college is for everyone? No. Do I think it's for some people? Yes. Do I think it's for everybody? No. What is your view in investing in the cannabis marijuana industry? Here's my deal in general. Um, highly regulated businesses I stay away from because at any moment, a government entity can put you out of business and you have no control. A new, pa new president comes into power, a new attorney, look at the attorney general now, Jeff Sessions, he doesn't like marijuana. So one guy, I don't like things out of my control when it comes to my income. So, you know, yeah. Um, that's my answer. There will be people who do well in marijuana. It's just, what if you build a business and it's going great for five years and then after five years, a new president comes in power, a new governor comes in power and shuts your damn business and what are you gonna do? You know, go to jail for your business. Well, then what's the point there? So I I tend to stay away. Regulated businesses are pharmaceuticals. They're tricky. You know, um, marijuana would fall under kind of, you know, substances. Highly regulated. Some regulation is going to be normal. Okay. Ty, why do you help people with stuff? Pay it forward. Somebody said, what about a million dollar haircut? Hey, don't hurt. Some of your hair got to get under under control. How do you become a producer in Hollywood? Well, for the most part, in Hollywood, a producer has money behind them. It's usually not your first step. Usually, it's easier to start as a director or as a writer. Direct uh, producers and executive producers are a lot of times the most powerful people, and they didn't start that way. Okay, let's keep going through here. So chunking is part of daily routine. Now let's switch. I want to go back to money making opportunities because I want to show you why this all matters. Okay, why this all matters. Let's pick some stuff. No, we're gonna, I want you to grab an item. Let's okay. grab an everyday household one that everybody knows. That's not one. Milk Pro, I've never heard of it milk before. Milk frother, everyone likes their milk frothy. Everyone uh, likes their milk frothy? <laughs> Yeah, that's a huge demand product. Or like product. an espresso, you could put some from. Okay, we have some vitamins. Okay, what vitamin is this? Skin. Neem oil. Skin and health. Okay, you know how much money right now is in the supplement business? I got a buddy who wrote a book on health, and he started a supplement brand. In the back of his book, he put an article, okay? And you know what? He's making 30 million bucks a year, and it's a brand nobody's ever heard of. There's so many people buying supplements that even if you only have this many, this percentage of the market, he's making 30 million, his margins are probably about 15, 20%. So he's walking with 6 million bucks a month. I mean a year, 6 million. I'd guess he's doing between four and $6 million a year. 
He just wrote a book. He's a personal fitness trainer. How many fitness trainers are out there struggling their ass off, working, 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 going, I got to work harder. I got to book more clients. Da, 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 da. Just we'll go back to the chicken with their head cut off. Part of your chick daily routine so you're not a chicken with your head cut off, you got to be studying the competition. You can't just work harder. Some of you going to work yourself right into the graveyard. Chicken with the head cut off. This is a lot of personal trainers I know, a lot of real estate agents, a lot of sales people, uh, a lot of life insurance agents, a lot of nine to fivers, a lot of people starting a restaurant. You will not progress through pure hard work. That worked 500 years ago where we used to plow and use a scythe to g uh, gather grain, but now one smart person creates a tractor, one tractor can harvest more food than a million people working. You see these big combines out in uh, out in Iowa and stuff like that? One of them could do more than literally a million people doing it by hand. Haley said the drawings are keeping me going. <laughs> so, um, somebody said, thank you, Ty. The supplement selling tip is what I needed. My recommendation, if you want to get in the supplement business, you need to lead with authority. You need to be somewhat of an authority. So if you're in good shape, you know, Write a little booklet. You can write a booklet, costs under five bucks. You can sell an ebook on Amazon. The whole production cost to get it up on Amazon is under a thousand dollars. Most of the money you spend, like if you want to do an ebook on Amazon, you should spend on people training you. There's guys, I forget their, I know some of these guys, I don't remember their name. They have courses online for like a thousand bucks. They'll teach you how to get a, a book on, e, an ebook on Amazon. Okay? So let's write, will you put some, um, new page. I'm just gonna have you draw some stuff. So let's talk about million dollar ideas that I've already gone into right today that have passed you up. Some of you should be a millionaire and you're not and I'm gonna show you what you missed. Can you draw mustard? Yes. Mustard. I want you to draw razors. Razors. A guy here in LA, an actor, he wasn't making much money as an actor. He made a quick commercial of him. He started a little razor business where he'd deliver razors to people's door for $1. He called it Dollar Shave Club. He just sold it for $1 billion. $1 billion. He sold it to uh, also Unilever. I think it was Unilever. Now, he didn't own 100% of the company, I don't think. But he probably easily walked with 100 mil on the low after taxes. I'm sure he walked with about 100 mil because he probably had 10 to 30 percent of the company. It was long term capital gains. If you own a company long enough, you don't have to pay full tax rate uh, plus whatever his basis was if he put any cash into it. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. That's for you that are a little more um, intelligent. Okay. So we're drawing thing, money making opportunities that you missed. Razors. You, 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 me, all of us could have shipped razors to people. He didn't have much money to start. He didn't have much money to start. He just did it. And he did it well. He understood how to allocate his time. He understood the mindset to keep himself ambitious and not lose heart because it didn't go from zero to a billion dollars. So razors. What do we got next, Kate? Mustard. Just sold two guys, started a mustard company under five years ago. Mustard, which every fast food restaurant you're going to, got mustard. See, people are always coming to me with these crazy business ideas. Oh, Ty, here's my business idea. I'm going to make an app. It's going to be the next Uber. It's going to train you. It's going to deliver alcohol. It's going to have cannabis come to it. I'm like, shit. Okay, you go do the hard stuff. I'll do the stuff that everybody's already buying. I'll do mustard. I'm getting ready to get in the mattress business. Why? Total addressable market, TAM, total addressable market for mattresses. There's 330 million Americans and there's basically 330 mat million mattresses. My total addressable market is massive. Why are you trying to make an app to deliver freaking, you know, snack foods on midnight on college campuses when mofos are getting rich on razors and mustard? People are stupid. <laughs> didn't have a millionaire mentor for those of you who want me to mentor you over the next 12 weeks I don't always do these calls like this I'm just doing them right now um, you want me to go in depth guide you for the next 12 months personally tylopez.com slash apply you have until midnight on Friday it will close it's a small test group okay what else water water how much did 
vitamin water sell for? Can you look it up, Armin? Vitamin water. How complicated is this? You put sugar. They don't even have real vitamins in that damn thing. It's got whatever bullshit. People, they're trying to pretend like vitamin water is really healthy for you. My ass. It's just sugar water so people like it. Yes, everything has a little vitamins. You put a little fruit sweetener in, you know, and you can claim there's, oh, there's this and blah, blah, blah. Four, four bill. bill. They sold for four billion. It's got a good name. Vitamin water. Vitamin water. It don't have shit vitamins. Let me see. Pull up on Amazon vitamin water. Let's look at the back, which will show the uh, the RDA on the different vitamins, the recommended daily allowance, and what percentage you get from vitamin water. Watch this bullshit. They just come up with a good name. Everybody in the world is broke because you have to be smart. You got to be cunning. You know, you got to understand marketing. While well, everybody else is. Here, did you pull it up on Amazon? Here, I'll show you. By the way, how to dissect these companies, download an Amazon app. You go here, this is what I do this all the time. You go to Amazon, you pull up the app. You should, ha this is a free app. Anything that's free, you should have on your phone. You go to vitamin water, and uh, then you can pull up right here on the back. They have to, by law, show you the RDA and the various things. So right here, you scroll to the side. Okay, it's got 80% of your vitamin C, 80% of vitamin B5, 6, 12, and then it just has a check mark next to manganese. What, just a check mark, I'm gonna start putting a check mark next to stuff. It doesn't even say if it's what you need. Check mark, and then electrolytes, it has a battery symbol. It's not even saying it. You know what electrolytes are? Salt and sugar. Salt. Salt. Ooh, whoop de doo So you take water, you put salt in it. Vitamin C, they don't, they get it because it's acai, so they put fruit juice in it, which has vitamin C. Four billion dollars. Four billion. Oh. What? Nothing. What is that? What's that say? Mustard. Oh, vitamin water. <laughs> we need to draw water. Let's draw water. So my question to you is, which side of the transaction are you on? Are you on the sucker side? You just buy vitamin water, just buy it all the time, and then you have harebrained business ideas at every moment. Your, your business idea is how you're going to do a, the next Uber app of fucking alcohol cannabis delivery. If one more person tells me that fucking idea, I'm just going to give up on humanity. It's not that good of an idea because alcohol, yes, people are doing it right now. For all you people who think I don't know about it. I don't love that idea. It's highly regulated. The first person that you serve alcohol and an 18-year-old buys the damn app, you're going to be in court. I do like Uber Eats idea. You deliver food from restaurants so you protect yourself from the liability of the, the, the kitchen, the inspected kitchen, and you deliver that. I like that idea, but I mean, you, know, you deliver cannabis and, you know, and drones and all this. Oh, God. Why are you making it so hard on yourself? For all you people who got the next Uber that's going to deliver alcohol and cannabis and a drone and all this bullshit, we got people making Razor Company, Dollar Shave Club, $1 billion. A, an actor did that, an amateur actor. Mustard. Vitamin water sold for $4 billion. They put some bullshit in it and they claim that it's vitamin water. It's just water with sugar and a little fruit juice in it. $4 billion. Why are your ideas so harebrained? We're just some simple ideas making money on large TAM total addressable market, large total addressable market products. You know, drone flying, cannabis, alcohol, things, you know, highly regulated. Somebody's gonna do it, but why are you gonna pick the hardest business? What about mustard? Everybody has mustard. What about spray tans with can? With, with Kate, not with can. <laughs> okay. I wrote it normal for you too. Smart business is to help people love your business ty what do you think about uber as a startup job yeah you make money how you got to make money you can do drive uber there's no shame in that make your money invest it and then build something bigger energy business is fuel for cars avoiding the oil industry like methane should it be done yes but it's complicated it should not be your first business please please Let, okay can you draw another new page can you make a like a pyramids of Egypt okay here's how this game goes this is another one I don't know how to get this through the average thick person's skull 
It's the most common sense thing in the world, but common sense is not common. So, for those of you, 50% of the people on this call are not worth talking to. They're bad people. We all know that. 50%, the other 25% of you are awesome people, but you're lazy. This is for the 25% of you who are good people and all and also know how to do stuff. And you're not overly lazy and procrastinating. Okay, here's how a big one. Go all the way like down to the bottom. I want you to think about whatever you're trying to do, okay, by levels of difficulty. All right. Okay. Okay. So draw it, divide it into, let's say, three levels. No, no, no. I know I'm doing Oh, she's doing a 3D one. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'll leave her. Someone said fix your camera setting. What do you mean? It's perfect, my camera setting. Fix your eyeballs. It's perfect, man. You can see me. Okay, repair geeks. Illuminati. Yes, I am the Illuminati. People... <laughs> Hey, all you got to know, another thing about people's IQ, some people think I'm in the Illuminati. You think the Illuminati goes on Facebook Live and Instagram Live? You think that's a common Illuminati technique to expose themselves by going on Facebook Live? Yes. Most of the Illuminati has 2 million Instagram followers because they want to have, they're a secret society, but they want PR, just like me. Yes. You are a genius. You are. You know what I like about that person that wrote that? One less competitor for you and I in business. Because if that guy tries to compete with us in business with the level of IQ that thinking I'm an Illuminati, we're going to blow by this guy. Worry about the people that are smart. These other people, you're just going to blow by. Okay, three levels of business. The largest group is what you start with. Your first type of business, the width represents the ease of the business. Start your first business with an easy one. Then... As you make money here, and you figure out how to make money here, then you go to stage two, where you make a little bit more money. Thank you. And then your last business, most people take three businesses to become a millionaire. On average, I read that once. I'm not sure how true it is, but it's something like that. The average person, Elon Musk, his first business was not Tesla. Mark Cuban, first business wasn't. Uh, um, Bill Gates, first business did well. <laughs> He's an exception to the rule. Warren Buffett, you know, his first one was not, his first investment wasn't his best one. So a lot of you, your first business idea, you're coming, this guy has methane gas production of fuel for cars. Is that an easy business to start for your first business? I, I just gotta ask this guy. That's your first business. I can tell you, you never started a business before. So you wanna start out with the top of the, the top of the triangle here, the hardest business is gonna be your first business. So you're the dude who's gonna go into the gym, you're gonna put 500 pounds on the bar, on the bench press, you've never lifted weights, you're gonna bench 500 pounds the first time, right? No, so a methane business is not a good first business. I'm just gonna break it to you, just common sense. You know what a great first business is? Food delivery business sell a vitamin bottle that you can get manufactured. Yeah, that's one. That's one. Do something simple. Christmas ornaments. Yes, sell Christmas ornaments. Uh, Mark Cuban's first business. I forget what his first business was. He told me. He was over here. I don't remember what. But Ty, you're a big inspiration. A self-start. I'm 16 and I already made my own cell phone business. Awesome. Prepped meals as a startup. David Zambrano. Yes. Prep meals for people to get, to get uh, you know, 50 people paying you 20 bucks a day to deliver them two meals and get your kitchen inspected or even buy the food from a, uh, a uh, restaurant, deliver these to these people, mark it up by double. And you got, so if you got 50 clients that you, and you pay somebody to deliver the food for you, you know, you're making. Someone said all that money and you can't hire a decent artist. <laughs> hey. What do you mean? She's good enough to get you watching. <laughs> this person too dumb to realize he, he's watching. <laughs> You're watching, fool. Okay. Yes, keep it simple. How good is day trading? 
you can make money in the stock market. Again, it's one of those things that's outside your control. You can wake up one day and there's a big issue and nothing you can do about it. I like things that are more in my control. Yeah, cell phone repair business. There's some kids that follow me. They came over here, they're making 20 grand a month and they're, I think, 16 and 17. They created a simple system where people mail in their broken phones, figured out a market on social media and they charge, I forget what they call, 100 bucks or something and they're making 20 grand a month. Okay? Somebody said, Ty, what about selling your sperm? <laughs> hey man, you ain't gonna make much money on that. They pay you about 50 bucks. Uh, and odds are you're not the sperm they're looking for if you're asking that question. You're probably automatically disqualified because you asked that question. It's probably at the sperm donor bank. They're like, do you randomly comment stupid things on YouTube? Okay. Nobody wants, no woman wants that IQ sperm. Uh, you're automatically out. Um, okay. Someone said that spray tan actually came out pretty nice, Kate. Okay, let's go. Okay. Cuban, oh yeah, Mark Cuban's first business was selling garbage bags. Again, Wayne Hai Zonga, founder of Blockbuster, became a billionaire. Of course, Blockbuster went bankrupt, but he was already a billionaire. He's laughing all the way to the bank. His first business was called Waste Management. Trash. Trash. There's money in damn trash. If you live in a third world country where there's a lot of damn trash, maybe you can get a contract with the government that you'll clean it up. You know? Um, <laughs> guys over here still commenting about Kate. We got Twitter is full of what I call the virgin patrol. You got, you got 2,000 virgins on here commenting about girls. Twitter? This is Twitter. These dudes ain't ever had a hot girl in their life. They even had a six. They're out there DMing fours and trying to give advice to Kate. Shit, you ain't getting a Kate. You won't get a Kate. Send me your picture with a Kate. So, yeah, exactly. All you Virgin Patrol people. Shit, I'm gonna send you a Kama Sutra book so when you become a big boy, you'll know what to do. All right. Can I work for you? Uh, not currently hiring, but if you watch my website occasionally, I will. Someone said, funny guy, this guy's funny. Ty came out with the fire. Hey, I just gotta tell the truth, I'm telling you. Social media is virgin patrol. I, it, sometimes if you ever click on the profiles of these people, these people, I, and some are 30 year old, 40 year old virgins too. <laughs> Automatic thing. Uh, okay, resale materials from abandoned houses. Huge, I like that, good idea. In fact, that's a good enough idea. Oh man, it went past. I was about to give you this Apple Watch, but I can't find it anymore. Kate is fine though. Somebody said, I'm deaf, no virgin. All right, I'm sure you're a ladies man. <laughs> I'm sure everybody, any, you know a woman's dream? Let me tell you a woman's dream. When women think about the men that they want in this world, they're like, you know, forget tall, dark, handsome, ambitious, successful. I want a man who knows how to comment on Twitter lives. This is a, this is high, high in the uh, attraction. Yeah, anyway. Dad bod or fit bod? Thoughts on starting a supplement company? Badass business, highly fragmented business. It's a $50 billion industry. Snack foods, snacks. I'll be getting into snacks. Just follow my lead, copy with the things that I do. A lot of people copy me anyway, I don't care. By the time you copy me, I already got a new idea. All right, so Instagram, I gotta reset it. Let's give away something. Oh, Let's yeah. do these Beats by Dre. Thank you. <laughs> we had 43,000 people watch on Facebook, on Instagram. Let's do it again. Okay, ready? Let's give this away right now. Not to Twitter, since they're being mean. What? I said not to Twitter. Who wants, who wants the Beats by Dre? Let's do it on Instagram. Beats by Dre, we're giving away. We're talking about Millionaire Mentor, workshop secrets, things about daily routine, things how to spot money-making opportunities everywhere that you look. Kate, show them how, what you're drawing, Kate. I am drawing a <laughs> pyramid of success. Wait, you're not in it. Oh. Yeah. A business pyramid. You gotta start with something easy and work your way up. Okay, let's pick it. Let's actually, yeah, let's pick it a, a, a YouTuber. YouTuber. So, okay. ready? Ready, one, two, three, stop. 
Alejandro Ortiz. You just got Beats by Dre coming your way. I'll be doing some more. We got I got an Apple Watch to give away. Ty, can you name a good starter business? Things that you can do out of your house with just an iPhone. Things you can do in your kitchen is a great business idea. Household goods, services, helping somebody old who owns a restaurant but doesn't know what the hell they're doing with social media, manage their social media for them. I've shown over 25,000 people how to build a social media marketing agency since last October. Already people make a million bucks a year from the idea that I gave them. Okay? People making 20 grand a month, 30 grand a month. 50. I told people in October, but as we all know, a lot of people are cynical, a lot of people are skeptical. They thought what I was saying was a scam. You know what? People always suspicious, always worried about being scammed. They already got scammed. They got scammed by the nine to five modern educational system. Their cubicle job already scammed them and they can't figure it out. So they're worried about, ooh, this late night infomercial. What if I buy this? It says I can invest in real estate. Well, no shit. You think that's a scam to invest in real estate? You think that a marketing agency, you never seen the movie Mad Men? Mad Men is a story of an advertising agency. You didn't know people make money with advertising agencies? You never heard. You've never heard. Like, it, it, it blows my mind. You know? But hey, that's how the game goes. What about a junkyard? Yeah, you can do that. I like businesses that are somewhat scalable. So if you if you start a junkyard, you know, um, you got to figure out a way to scale it so you don't just have one location. A better thing to do would be a business where you pick up trash uh, from home. So people like people have there's an app. It's like you need your trash picked up, or you advertise with Facebook ads. People who have an extra mattress, people have that. You hire two people to do it, a quick moving business. Like Moving business is a good business. Moving business. People don't like to move. You get a good reputation. You do corporate. You move businesses because a lot of businesses. And you don't even have to do the moving. You hire three people. You're the entrepreneur. You're the head. You're the quarterback of the team. The other people run it. Money everywhere. Everywhere. College is beating creativity out of people. Not just college. Society in general. Social media. Overuse of social media as only a spectator sport. See, I use social media, but not just as a spectator sport. You got to ask yourself, are you in the spectator game or are you actually in the game where you benefit from social media? I benefit from social media. People go, oh, Ty, aren't you on your Snapchat a lot? Yeah. Yeah. But would you be on Snapchat if you were making millions of dollars a month from Snapchat? Would I be dumb to get off Snapchat? Of course, of course. Snapchat, I'm launching brands. I'm doing all kinds of stuff you guys don't even know about. So social media, when you're on the wrong side, remember I said, it's all about being on the right and the wrong side of the transaction. Where'd Kate go, Alma? Uh, she to oh, okay. Cause I, I need her to draw a couple more things. We need more drawing. She tell her to just eat while she's doing this. Somebody said, Ty, I know you don't make shit from Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Snapchat make you rich. Snapchat make you rich. What do you mean? I got six cars in that garage over there. Talk is cheap. That last Rolls Royce is paid for by Snapchat. You know? When you get yourself a Rolls Royce Dawn convertible, then you come tell me about Snapchat, kid. So, you know, show us the Lambo. <laughs> I do it on my Snapchat. We'll drive tonight. What's up? Just eating. There, can you eat and, and draw? What is that? Um, chicken. Was this delivered? Yep. Yeah. Food delivery, how much should we pay for this? We bought a bunch, so. Roughly, Alma, how much? It was about $80. For four plates like this, or how many? Yeah, there was five plates. Five plates for 80 bucks, roughly about 15 16 bucks a piece for this little chicken uh, and bread but I already ate it lettuce do you know the cost of lettuce rice you and buy sacks of rice <coughs> this whole thing cost them one dollar this, this shit cost people one dollar they just charge us 17 bucks and we probably paid them a tip do is that plus delivery or with delivery no delivery. Then they tacked on delivery and they probably charged us double. But we're happy to pay it. 
People don't want to cook. People are lazy. People are lazy. What I mean by that is people will gladly pay you 20 bucks for something that costs you $1. And they feel good. You're not scamming them. Kylie Jenner made $420 million from her Snapchat and Instagram. I'm behind the game. You know? All you people are like, oh, do you make money from social media? I'm like, I'm behind the game. I'm not trying to compete with money virgins. I'm trying to compete with the big boys. Start a personal grocery shopper for people. The only problem with that business, people, remember I said go mainstream. Stuff that people are already doing. No one's used to paying somebody to, to go shopping for them. They are used to paying somebody to deliver them food. Delivery pizza has been around 20, 30 years. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, you have to think about it that way. What about affiliate marketing? It can be okay. It's a crowded space. You got to be good. It's for those of you who are really good at marketing. You can crunch numbers. You're unemotional. You know, it's more of a nerd business. Although, there's always exceptions to the rule. What about a lead generating company using Facebook? Hell yeah, that's a great business. You generate leads. There's a, one million insurance agents in the United States. There's over one million realtors in the United States. They don't know how to get leads. Their biggest problem is they don't have anyone buying houses for them. You say, I'll charge you 100 bucks for somebody who's ready to buy a house or wants to sell their house. I'll generate the lead for you, and you can probably charge 500 bucks because they're going to make in commissions. Like, you know, between if it's $100,000, if the average house is two hundred fifty grand. They're doing a broker, let's say 5%, they split it halfway, they're making 2.5%, they're making five grand per customer. So if you charge them 500 bucks a lead, if a lead on Facebook ads costs you 100 bucks, you're netting the difference. It's, I, I was in that business. Lead generation, one of the first businesses I was in, and that was a great business. Somebody said, yo, these people are really trying to get with, with Kate through Instagram. <laughs> uh, hey. Mystery. The more successful you become, the more you're going to have people try to steal your girl, try to steal your bank account, try to steal. But the good news is everybody wants to move up. So as long as you're up, people are going to want to move towards you, and they're not going to care about the other people. Ty, what about flipping cars? Another great business. Those of you who know about cars, go out. My buddy, my friend, he has a PhD, but on the side, he makes $4 million a year from cars. Gross. Four million. You know what he does? Two things. He started out just buying cars cheap, paying a mechanic to fix them up. Then he said, wait a second. The mechanic, let me turn that into a business. He turned it into, he bought a little body shop, a little place in North Carolina, and they fix up cars. And then he cut a deal with Hertz, the air, the rent-a-car company, and he they fix all Hertz's cars. So he's flipping probably, you know, 100000 to a $1 million worth of cars, and then he's doing like $3 million in repairs with good profit margins, cars. But he knows how to market. I trained him. He's one of my millionaire mentor students from years ago. You know, mobile car wash, another good business to start. Remember, mobile car wash, food delivery, that's a starter businesses. Okay, you're gonna make less money, but they'll be easier and that's okay. No one here should try to go from zero to a billionaire. Okay, why do you wanna go from zero to a billionaire? You gotta walk before you run. I want to make a movie theater chain. That's hard. That's up here. That's your third business. You don't get the right to do that yet. And some people say, but Ty, why can't you skip to the top? Well, how about this as a homework assignment? Everybody here, go put your hands behind your back tomorrow. Go to some stairs, some concrete stairs at like a gym or at a, at a you know outdoor uh, track. And I want you to jump up nine stairs at a time with your hands behind your back. Start at the bottom, try to jump nine at a time. Let me tell you, then send me your pictures with all your teeth knocked out with a broken nose because you fell. Well, what do you think it is trying to go from here all the way to there without the intermediary steps? Why are you skipping steps? Why are you skipping steps? Okay? Your girl likes to be on camera, ha ha ha. Show us the shoe game. Oh, what do I got on today? We got the... Turtle doves, Yeezys, these are comfortable. Okay, let's keep talking. I'm gonna switch the subject for a second. How long have we been going? One hour, right? Yeah. Good, because now I'm gonna go to 
episode two for my podcast. I'm gonna try these as hour long schemes. Disassemble lines of cash cars to sell recycled part. Okay, now I want to talk about. Let me switch subjects. You wanna you wanna clap and redo it? You can stay here. Oh, we're eating on camera. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Show them this twenty dollars that cost. You just made somebody nineteen dollars richer, Kate. <laughs> Kate is an artist. What's my net worth? Eighteen dollars. Hmm. How about a yoga studio? It's okay. Not my favorite business idea. But if you really enjoy yoga, you're gonna have the way to make money um, with a yoga studio, you need to franchise it or you need to have multiple locations. Look at Barry's boot camp. That's a badass business model for those of you in the fitness business. And they are just making money hand over fist, helping people, helping people lose weight. I mean, it's a win-win business. They're helping the world and they're getting rich. Do that. You know? Okay. Tell us when we're ready to start. Okay, we're switching to the second hour. You guys can stay right here. I'm just going to do it quick. You want to clap? Okay, welcome to today's episode, podcast, radio, whatever you want to call it. I want to talk about something i'm doing a live stream here of my millionaire mentor uh workshop and now i want to talk about the first hour i was talking about uh, the last episode i was talking about million dollar opportunities how to see them how to spot them now i want to talk about how to take an idea from just something in your brain to reality this is the magic because all i can say is right now we probably have about a hundred thousand people going to watch this we just had 43,000 people on Instagram alone, and Facebook's usually a little bigger. So right there, without Twitter and YouTube, is about 100,000 people, okay, on the last hour. Out of that 100,000 people that have been watching here live, without a doubt, I would be happy with one of them, one person today. That's the current ratio of the world. If you can have every 100,000 people find one who's actually worth a damn, you're doing well. If you want to make it in this world, you have to be worth a damn. Remember what Charlie Munger says, the billionaire partner of Warren Buffett. To get what you want, you have to deserve what you want. The world is no longer a crazy, the world is not a crazy enough place to reward a whole bunch of undeserving people. So I wanna talk about this. Um, I'm gonna have Kate. Kate, are you gonna draw this for me, por favor? I'm having Kate draw everything because 